here with uh, Gail and Swadley and Andy King. And uh, he and I have been uh, going back and forth on uh, doing a little load development uh, for his uh, 65 Creedmoor. We're going to be uh, heading out to Nevada, uh, out near the Reno area, to uh, try and make some 2,500 yard shots with a 65 Creedmoor and a uh, 6.5 by 47 Lapua. Conditions are probably about 65, 70 degrees, uh, pretty light humidity, 25% humidity. We've got a pretty much three quarter value, anywhere from 10 to 18 mile an hour gusting wind. Uh, we're shooting at 750 so far today. With this load, uh, granted this is a hand load for this rifle, so we're running a little hotter than you would factory, but around 3,000 feet per second for this bullet. Less than a, probably less than a mill hold, probably around three quarter mill hold for that wind. And uh, we're having absolutely no problem cutting through it out here and, and making hits. I'm feeling really good about Monday. I think we're gonna get it done. I don't see why we shouldn't be able to get it done at all. How it all started for me was uh, actually meeting Steve Anthony at Athlon and him asking me to stop by the shop, which kind of got a dialogue going, which ended up with Matt and myself <laughs> starting to talk about it. And uh, I invited you guys down to the, invited Fort Scott down to my range for a day just shooting and kind of getting to know everybody. And that's when the, can you make a 2,500 yard shot with a 6.5 Creedmoor <laughs> question came up, which led to Matt and I a bunch of phone calls trying to figure out the load data to try to get that. It, it's a pretty insurmountable task, really, to get that tiny little bullet 1.46 well, miles. And we were back and forth, you know, Galen would Galen would, would, would text me, okay, here's what I'm thinking with this load, you know, and I would I would take it and load it and, and run it through its paces and come back with ballistics data, and, and I'd say, well, here's what this is doing, and then he would take that, and he'd say, okay, well, I, want, I may need a little more velocity, and so then he would, <laughs> he would take his load and tweak it and try to find one that worked good in his gun and, and it was a lot of back and forth. And it was about a, about a two week process of that. But the, the thing we need to realize is that when guys go for distance records with any caliber, it's several months of load data development, of practice, all that. We threw it all together in two weeks and got on a plane.
that day. We zeroed uh, when we got there, just kind of verified some data. And then the next day we ran the data and my first shot hit close enough to spray dirt all over the target. Yeah, within inches, literally. Within inches, I mean, and uh, we actually didn't impact on the small 16 inch target. We actually hit the 25 inch backer behind it. And uh, the holes in that are actually show a perfectly stable bullet. An MOA target, one MOA target is typically the standard that guys go for for distance records. At uh, 2,500 yards, that's 26.2 inches. So we had a hit that was within an eighth of an inch of the 16 inch plate, which put it in, would have put it well within sub MOA range. Actually, a couple hits. Well, and I, I looked, <laughs> I lined up the target, uh, and I do not know how that no. projectile, at the angle it was coming in with the wind from the left and where it was being pushed, it made a hit on the right side of the, of the backer <laughs> that, that it couldn't have missed it by more than the width of the, of the projectile. No, and, and, that, and this is what I, I want to get across also. The, the shot we're trying to put, pull off is actually far outside the capabilities of the cartridge. I mean, it's, it, it's actually, it's kind of a Hail Mary and every single shot was, you couldn't, you couldn't barely miss and slightly adjust off that miss and shoot. Every shot was a completely new shot because in the time it took for the bullet to get there, you were completely in a different set of wind. Now flight time was like seven and a half seconds. Almost eight so, seconds yeah. flight time. Yeah, so that's a when you, time. and there were times when literally you would pull the trigger and partially through the bullet flight, you would feel a gust and just rack the bolt and you knew you were off. I mean, it's... Okay. That died off a little bit on the one. First time I've ever dealt with that kind of shooting, because any time I've shot past 2,000 yards has been with a large caliber Magnum rifle, a 338, 300 Norma things like that. So shooting a non-magnum short action cartridge that far was a whole new ball game. Oh, you're right in front of right it. Right in just, front of it. Just off the left. You're off the right front edge, about three feet right about two feet low. Well, that wind's pushing down there. Well, what was fun to hear on the video is, you know, we had GoPros set up all over the place and, and you know, when that bullet takes off, uh, the 6.5x47 that I was shooting was doing 2,935 feet per second. Uh, Galen was, was shooting... Uh, around 3,020. Yeah, right around, just over 3,000 feet per second, but when that bullet takes off, at some point, the speed of sound remains constant and, and the sound of the gun firing will actually overtake the bullet as it as it goes from supersonic to transonic to subsonic and you can hear that in the in the video on the gopro i gotta thank dustin over there at cfa for building just an amazing <laughs> rifle that put us in the ball even in the ballpark um, and then special thanks to Athlon because they sent out some spotting scopes to, for spotters. You know, they came out and uh, ran the scopes for us uh, and really helped out in a huge way there. Uh, a big thanks out to, uh, you know, AJ Sporting Goods for the shooting bags, you know, from Taylor's Tactical. Um, and then obviously Fort Scott Munitions for making the trip happen, pulling it all together, you know, with just a, a top shelf projectile and uh, just huge support staff to go out there and help us get this stuff done. You know, without without those companies pitching in, it, it just wouldn't happen. So. We set out to prove that that was a new class 6.5 bullet. Um, I feel we've done that. Even now, we're still going to get the hit. You know, we're not done. We're still going to get that hit done so that we can kind of claim longest recorded shot for Creedmoor and, and Lapua. Um, but insurmountably, we proved that this bullet is... I mean, there's other bullets that would probably stay, stay stable, but 
you know, like I said, we had 60 to 70 percent of those rounds were within three feet, and then probably 40 to 50 percent of those rounds were within a foot. So you can't get, and they're mortaring in. I mean, they're coming in just almost straight up and down. So you can't get that kind of consistency without a bullet that's holding together. Absolutely great time. I'm very happy to have got to go. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next attempt.